Hello, welcome to a late night edition of Kung Fu Physics where we are working our way through the practice uh, physics GRE problems. The one I'd like to do tonight is on the 1996 practice exam number five. Looks like that. 1996 number five. Um, is the one we're going to be doing. So if you have these uh, practice exams run off, then go ahead and flip to that so you can look at it in front of you. And this is, in my eyes, arguably one of the easiest problems that there is in all the, the practice problems that I've looked at for the physics GRE. Um, mm -hmm. It seems easy for several reasons. It seems very straightforward and you can solve it quickly. It also seems easy because it's not a third or fourth year physics topic like modern or thermal or quantum or something like that. It's just first year classical mechanics, freshman physics -y type material, and it's very straightforward. So what's I'll do here is uh, just go ahead and, and solve it the way I would be uh, thinking through it on the exam and then maybe talk a little bit about it afterwards. So um, let me get the problem up. There it is and as always I glance at the answers first. In this case it doesn't help me so it's a quick glance because I can just see their forces there and obviously there's a diagram with the corresponding forces. I'll just be picking off a diagram. So I enjoy these uh, visual type of problems, sort of conceptual problems, and so I would dive right into this problem. Number five, a car travels with constant speed on a circular road on level ground. In the diagram above, F air, that's the subscript is AIR air, is the force of air resistance on the car. Which of the other forces shown best represents the horizontal force of the road on the car's tires? Okay, so good to get a rapid physical picture um, in your head of what's going on here. And so it's a car that's going in a circle. It is keeping a constant motion in that circle and there's air resistance on the car. They've told us that there, there is air resistance. So. I can imagine myself being in that car. It, there's nothing wrong with that. What do I have to do as a driver in that car to keep the car going? Do I have to push on the accelerator pedal? If there was no air resistance, um, maybe not. If there was no air resistance or friction whatsoever and I had a, a velocity that was going to be constant, I guess theoretically I could uh, turn the car and keep going in a circle just by using the wheels but that's not a realistic physical situation now is it we you should know that the reason you have to keep pushing on the gas pedal in your car when you're on a level surface is of course because of friction depending on the speed you're going at it is largely air resistance especially the the faster you go the higher that air resistance goes so if you're trying to maintain a circle one of the forces that's stopping your velocity is going to be air resistance you're going to have to be pushing on the gas pedal and of course you're going to have to be turning the wheels to keep yourself in that circle so looking down on the car from this way there are only a couple of forces that are actually acting on the car. And what I would want to do is draw a new free body diagram because it is very cluttered just looking at the diagram that they give you because it's got all those forces that are options in there that could tend to confuse you. This looks much cleaner, right? We've got the free body diagram. We know of one force on there. That's the force of air resistance. We also know that there is an acceleration that's a centripetal acceleration in towards the center. We know that that's where the acceleration is because our picture in our head is telling us that we are not hitting on the gas 
and moving faster through the curves um, we're not increasing our speed as we travel in a circle we're not increasing our speed as we travel through the circle so we know that all of the acceleration is taking place just as a centripetal acceleration we could get the magnitude if we wanted it, but we don't really need it so this is the simple picture that I have in my head when I'm solving this problem and I'm blabbering on and on but really you could just take your pen and fill in the other force because there's only one other force that's relevant that's acting on the car and it's the force of the ground acting on the car we remember or we should know conceptually that that's how an a car works I mean the wheels are pushing on the ground and of course the ground is pushing back on the wheels there's no other forces that would come to mind that I would be feeling like I needed to draw in here there's no other force forces that are mentioned in the problem and so really I have the force of air resistance and I have one more force the force of the ground on the car that I need to draw in that is going to result in an acceleration in that direction that I've got it drawn in. And so there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, for some of you, you probably already got it and you're imagining what the force looks like and you could just take your pen and draw it in and answer the problem. If you wanted to though, you could break it down into components, which would probably agree to for some people. Since the car is not uh, braking or accelerating, it's not accelerating any in the X axis. So there's got to be a component of the force that I'm going to draw in. Well, let's draw it like that. And I'm going to try to draw it the same magnitude of the air resistance there. It's got to be equal and, air and opposite to the air resistance, the force of air resistance, to balance that out so there's no acceleration in the X axis. So I could call this F sub X and that's one component and then I want another component to this force it's one force with two components and I want another component that's going to cause that resultant acceleration the centripet centripetal acceleration that's going towards the center we call that FY and so that's the other component I would add those like we add vectors and get the force F as looking like the resultant of those two components and there's only one of those forces in the problem that looks even remotely like that you should be paranoid be paranoid when you take this exam. Make sure that they've got it uh, set up the way you expect it is. Is F sub A answer A? Yes. Is F sub B answer B? Yes. Okay, so the one that's attractive to us is F sub B, and F sub B happens to be answer B. So we would answer that. That's it. That's all there is to it. And so it's a pretty simple problem. I, I blabbed on a lot about it, but... Uh, Looking at the answers, if I remember correctly, I think I looked at this, and people that attempted this, something like 29% of the people that attempted it got it wrong. And so I think people just got sloppy and uh, were quick in making their answer and just weren't thinking about the situation quite right or maybe something in the way that the problem was worded. Um, confuse them. So I could see a couple things in the way the problem is worded that might confuse people. But if that's the case for you, if you're having trouble understanding it, just uh, go back and, and think through the concepts until you have yourself clear on what's actually going on there. How the car is pushing on the road, how the road is pushing back on the car, and why those forces and the resulting acceleration looks the way it does pretty straightforward problem. Um, thank you. I'll see you next time.